Yes, I think the button is Woo! First place! Hey guys, Trev here back in the garage with the Model 3. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the Tesla Model 3's user interface and we are gonna go over every little feature that's hidden within that one center screen. Now this video is going to be very, very long, I have to tell you, because I wanna be thorough and make sure we cover everything. And in general, this is mostly gonna be a help to people who are curious, those who have just ordered their cars or those who have perhaps just received their cars and don't have a lot of familiarity with what each setting does and what they're for, or perhaps what a good initial setup is. So without any delay, let's get going. Okay, let's dive right on into our screen. So just top to bottom here, in the upper corner, you have a small padlock. That padlock will lock and unlock your car. You have the time beside it, the temperature beside that, and a little T, which we will go into in one moment. After that, you have your memory settings. Now these memory settings, I'll allow this to adjust here, um, are different ones that uh, are available and they save all of your kind of settings like your seat and all of your preferences and stuff like that. And that could be for as many people as you want. Uh, and that it also includes a valet mode, which is password protected so that um, you, could you could limit the car to a certain speed when valets have it. Beside the profile function, you have this little eye here, which turns on and off sensory mode in a pinch. After that, we have the Wi-Fi antenna. You can set up your Wi-Fi there. And on that side, we have the uh, Bluetooth antenna, and you can pair your phone to Bluetooth or pair multiple phones there. Now, this whole area is going to be uh, your navigation screen. Now, the navigation screen uh, has a compass. You can arrange it in different ways, north up, you know, dip, uh, on your track, on your destination, things like that. Uh, zoom in and out is very easy there, or you can just pinch like a normal uh, iPad or any tablet that you're used to. It's very smooth. Um, if you have any of the premium interior models, you can also turn on satellite. Now, of course, by default, this will be shut off at night. Uh, traffic on or off. And the bottom button there that I just pressed right there brings up the list of the closest superchargers to you. Uh, besides that, it's pretty simple. So right up here, there's a button that says navigate. So you can press that and we can enter in any address we want. We press that address and it's going to automatically calculate us a route to our destination. Not only that, it's going to um, show us how much range, sorry, I'll bring that back up. It's gonna show us how much range that we actually are gonna have by the time that we reach our destination based off our current charge rate. Now you also have some settings here by pressing this little wheel in your navigation. This is the volume for the speech and all these other navigation options. So we have automatic navigation, which is basically gonna assume where you're going depending on your schedule. We have a trip planner, which is going to try to work in the superchargers, online routing, which is gonna constantly check traffic to make sure you're on the best route, and a couple of avoidance rules here, like avoid ferry, avoid tolls, and use HOV lanes. Now moving on to the left part of the main screen. Now, since I am here in the garage and parked, I have at the top here, this little logo, we press that and it brings up the battery screen. So it shows me basically the car's current state of charge. Also this line represents uh, where I want my battery to charge to at night. Now I can move this along and tell it, okay, yeah, I want you to charge to, in this case, 80%. And that's it. So you can see the current range, the current battery state, the current rate of charge it's getting, current amount of electricity it's using, at the bottom, it shows uh, a couple options for your uh, charge rate that you want, depending on the infrastructure you have set up and different modes of charging. You could have it charge immediately. You could have it start charging at a certain time, depending if you get better electricity rates. And you can also, like me, have it set, I'm leaving for work tomorrow at 8 a.m. So the car is gonna be ready to go charged and warmed up at 8 a.m. Very easy. On the other side of the screen there, as you'll see, it says uh, ready to depart at 8 a.m shows me my current range in kilometers and also shows my vehicle there. We have an option here to open up the front trunk, another option for the rear trunk, and we could open and close the charge port, but since it's plugged in right now, that's not going to work. Also on this side of the screen, we have the ability to see out the rear camera 
You could use that while you're driving as well. You could also bring up that charge screen again, or you could use voice instructions. Now in this part of the screen, you also have your wiper selection. Now it's defaulted to auto. You can shut them off entirely, or you can put them on manually. Now, if you swipe left on this part, you're gonna bring up your tire pressure monitor system, which will be engaged when the car is in drive. If you swipe right, you're going to find your list of very important things here. So we have obviously a, uh, how many kilometers I've used since my last charge, uh, the last charge itself. I set up this custom uh, trip odometer for road trips. And then I also set up this lifetime one to track. And then way at the bottom here, you have your odometer. So if you're looking for your odometer, it is there. Okay, now before we get any deeper, let's go along the bottom here. So first you'll see car settings. That's the car there. Music, that brings up the menu for all of the extra features that are in this taskbar. Uh, heated seat driver, this brings up your climate control. This is a quick climate control temperature switch. Passenger seat, uh, window defog options, mirror, and, and other electronic defogs, and volume, okay? Now, before we go into any of those submenus, let's look at that T we talked about at the top. Now, that's going to bring up a picture of your car. Uh, we have here, now for me, I have the Model 3 Performance, and it says Model 3 Dual Motor, and then it's got the red line for performance. Some people might be asking, why doesn't it show the performance wheels? But that's because I have my 18-inch snow tires on here right now, and it changes the image for that. It shows you your uh, kilometers, for your odometer, the VIN number, and the current version. Now from this screen, you could also get to the release notes, which will allow you to see the details of your most current update to your car. Also from this screen, you can access the owner's manual uh, and go in there and there's all these options to choose. And it's, it's, very, it's very well laid out. You can also search it up top. And there's also a number here for roadside assistance. Now, you may be wondering what that pop-down screen was. We have on that pop-down screen, some fun, fun, things. We have uh, more cowbell, which is uh, basically uh, going back to some uh, some surprise that Elon had from some of his uh, Elton John references there. Uh, we have this awesome drawing program that can be done. Uh, again, you could choose your color that you're drawing in and you're able to do that. Okay. So uh, it even says here, okay, that you could publish it. And it's a funny, funny notation here that says, no, the world's not ready for my art or yes, I am an artist. I don't actually know where these publish to, but I've never, uh, I've never done it. Next on this list, you have, of course, the whoopee cushion selection. Now for the whoopee cushion selection, you're able to put a fart on different seats, okay? And you're able to play that through those speakers that are at those seats. Now you can choose uh, different farts if you want, or you can make it random if you prefer. You could also set it to uh, work on turn signals or on demand, by pressing the left scroll wheel. There's a Santa Ru uh, Rudolph mode here, uh, which says, oh, there we go. Wow, that actually took me some time to shut that off. Uh, okay, otherwise we have uh, another mode here, which looks like the planet Mars. And yes, this gives you, it makes your nav screen actually uh, match the map of Mars. So pretty neat there. And of course, to disable that, you can just press the little planet. Uh, and now we can see all of these great superchargers that are on the map around me. The ever so popular next feature is romance mode, which is quite epic. So of course you press that button, it brings you up this epic fireplace and all of the heating in here starts going like crazy. All the seats get really hot. It blows really, really hot guys within a few minutes. And if you didn't know that it does this, you could also tap the screen and get some nice romantic music. Now you can also change the songs with this button here. So you can change the songs by pressing the scroll wheel and increase or decrease the volume. I wish I could and you just tap that to end it. Oh, it's getting hot in here. Wow. I'm gonna have to tell that to shut off. Okay, and the last feature in that little bonus section there is of course the Tesla Arcade, but we're gonna go into that in a moment. So that is your main Tesla screen there. So for the bottom functions, what we're gonna do is go right to left, okay? Because it gets a little busier as you go more left. 
And uh, we're going to just start over here. You have the volume control up or down. You can see there we have our uh, window heat, electronic heat, diff electronic defrost for the uh, mirrors as well. And then we have two versions to the front window defrost, a kind of cool version to clear it off or a extra hot version there. Now we have again, passenger heated seat, driver heated seat, so on. And if you touch here on the main climate control, you get this awesome setting that pops up where you can actually direct the heat or the cool in whichever direction you want to make it comfortable. You can manually set which fans it's coming out of or use auto like I do and it will automatically set it there. Okay. You can also set for it to come out of the rear for the rear passengers if you do have rear passengers. And if you click this screen here, you're going to get your heated seats. So we're able to heat every seat in this car and you can also shut them all off at once and they have three modes each, okay? Now you can turn down the temperature here. Uh, you can have both sides sync or you, or you could have, uh, you could have both sides synced or you could have separate climate zones. And again, guys, for all this stuff, we just kind of pull down on it to move it. But one thing you'll see here is keep climate on. Okay, so say you're camping in the car or something, you keep climbing on, it's gonna stay on once you're out. Or if you want to enter dog mode when you get out of the car to keep the car cool for your dogs and display for people that you have a dog in the car and it is at a appropriate temperature, this is how you set that there. And again, make that all go away by just dragging it down. Past my seat here, I'm gonna move into the main sub menu here, okay? And from this side, it's not too bad. We have calling. For again calling you have your um, calendar which has your work calendar or whatever else you have programmed into your phone again that brings up the rear camera just like the other option over there you have your energy chart here and it does change all the time now of course it's easy to get obsessive over this and it is a good indication but don't go too crazy with it you have a 10 kilometer average as you could tell I was having a little fun today 25 kilometers 50 and you can have instant or average. This one, you could also go into your trip range. When you start a trip, it will tell you what it predicts your range will be when you get there, and it will update as you go so you can see how much you're gonna realistically have. Now, again, this one here brings up the charging screen. As you guys can see, there's multiple ways to get to each screen, not a big deal. And we have the next one is our web browser. This is pretty cool. Uh, you could bring up whatever sites you want and scroll through. And you could also favorite sites and list them for future use. Now the big one, the entertainment tab. So entertainment, we have a lot here. We have Netflix and yes, it does work and it will work whether you're um, at home on Wi-Fi or if you're out and about and you have signal. I have it on my daughters right now, as you can tell what I use it for. But yeah, you have Netflix right there. And of course you can go up to the top of any of these. Oh gosh. Now you also have YouTube and you can go into Tesla tutorials, okay, in order to get like different tutorials for stuff inside the car. They're really just small videos that are available on your site anyways. We were not going to go through those. Now the fun one, we have the arcade, which is wicked. You have these amazing old Atari games, okay? You have Gravatar, Tempest, uh, Multipede, Missile Command, Lunar, Lander, Super Breakout, uh, Centipedes, Asteroids, 2048 chess, which I love, me and my wife play it all the time, and then some more modern games. You also have Beach Buggy Racing 2, uh, which my daughter absolutely loves, so check that out. It's really good stuff there. You also have a very uh, awesome game, which is Cuphead, and that's what we have so far. Now, going back to the main menu, we have a few other things here that we haven't touched on. We've gone over the main submenu bar, we get rid of that. Then we have music, okay? That is not just your music bar, this is like a subversion. There's three settings, there's music up, music mid, and music high. That's the three settings for it. This is just showing all of your recents and favorites. And if, say, you want to go to a playlist or get a full version of what you're listening to, it's there. Now, at the bottom of the music, you'll also notice you have radio. For the, is CBC radio for the radio settings in the car. 
You have your phone settings to connect your phone. You can also listen to your phone music. Uh, you have streaming services. There's a quite a few in this car, okay? You have access to not just Spotify, but also TuneIn and a few other ones like that. You have karaoke, okay? So you can actually do karaoke in the car. Yes, it does work. And Spotify, of course. Tune in for podcasts, stuff like that. Music settings to balance all of your speakers and the balance inside the car, everything like that. And also uh, settings for, you know, bass, tone, immersive sound, everything like that. Very, very cool stuff. You can also search, it's probably what you'll use the most. You can search any music you want in any category and that will search across the band. So that is your music. You get rid of that there. The next and final one is going to be this little car here. This is all of your controls, okay? So first you start out with quick controls. We have exterior lights, uh, whether we want fog lights on, uh, we can adjust the mirrors, adjust the steering wheel, fold in the mirrors, lock the child lock for the windows, set the display brightness, I'll keep that on auto. And then in lights, we have the same options, but they're just separate from the quick controls. There's also a setting here for the dome lights to be on auto. You have the ambient lights. Uh, to be on within the car. There's these little lights that are kind of just around the inside of the cockpit. Hard to see here in the garage, but they are there. Um, auto high, high beam, headlights after exit, and steering wheel lights are available there as well. Very simple. Locks, here you set up the phone locks and you can tie it to your phone. So you're gonna set up a new one. You're gonna go into your app, into the manage setting, and the, the Tesla app, and then you're gonna be able to add that right there at the dealership into this setting. So basically you'll press plus there, You'll go into your app, you'll press manage keys, you'll open that up, Bluetooth will work, and you'll be able to set that up. You also have the keys that came with the car here, and you can set up custom names to them. Now, every setting you have here is also tied to a profile, so when somebody uses their key, it's gonna bring up all their settings. Now, again, at the bottom here, we also have the window lock and the child lock on the doors. For display, this is not uh, too complicated at all. Sorry, guys, I'm just gonna turn down the fan here. Uh, for the display, it's not too complicated at all. We have um, auto, so for day, you guys can see, it bring, makes it very bright and it doesn't really work well at night, and then we have night, and then we have auto, okay? Screen clean mode just makes the, clean, the screen completely black so you can rub it with a cloth and clean it off. Uh, language settings, time settings, this is an important one, whether you want your range to display in a percentage or a distance. Again, percentage or distance, that is set there. Kilometers or miles, Celsius or Fahrenheit, bar, PSI for your tire pressures. It's all right there in the display. Under driving. Now, uh, if you have, this this depends, okay, on your, on your model, because I have a Model 3 Performance. So you have two modes. You have chill and sport for acceleration, steering mode, comfort, standard, or sport. Regenerative braking, low or standard. Keep that on standard, my recommendation. And then we have the stopping mode, okay? So the stopping mode, if you want to do the one pedal driving, you press hold. If you want to uh, just roll, like a, almost like a manual car in that sense, you're going to use roll and creep is going to be like an automatic where it just kind of creeps forward when you let off the gas, okay? Next, we have the autopilot settings, how many cars you want, uh, distance between you, whether you want auto steer on, navigate on, autopilot on. Under those settings, we have enable at the start of every trip. Navigate on autopilot is just an extra mode to autopilot that works on the highway and it will make lane changes for you and past cars and everything like that. We have speed-based lane changes for disabled, mild, average, or mad max. Okay, so if a car in front of you is not going fast enough and you have it on mad max, it is passing it. Uh, you have basically a setting here that asks you if you want it to confirm before it makes a lane change. I shut all those off and whether you want a notification. Okay, so not too complicated there. Summon. We have customized summon. It's basically for setting up your garage distances uh, to tell it how it's going to be able to fit in the garage. And standby mode for summon, I don't really use, but it basically makes sure the car, if if it knows it's going to be summoned, or if you know you're going to summon, summon it uh, regularly uh, from work or whatever, you're able to uh, keep it on standby, but that does burn more battery. Uh, speed warning, uh, <laughs> I don't really use this except for the display and you can make it relative as well. Now, forward collision warning, this is basically warning you if a car is stopped ahead of you, okay, that you may hit it based off your speed. You can set it to be you know, a little premature, a little early, or a little late, depending on what your preference is. You can kind of play with it, start more conservative, and work your way back. 
Lane departure avoidance. I keep this one on assist, so if I'm drifting off a little bit, the car is going to correct for me. I also keep on emergency lane departure avoidance, blind spot collision warning chime, automatic emergency braking, and obstacle aware acceleration. Now, all of these are critical to your safety, so you might as well leave them on. If you're going for a speed run, though, you might want to shut off obstacle aware acceleration. Next one is navigation. A lot of settings that you saw before under the navigation setting itself. Now, for safety and security, what we have here is, uh, it's very basic, okay? In safety and security, you can quote unquote power off the car, okay? You press power off, it's going to basically disconnect the computer from the monitor and shut everything down. But this doesn't actually put the car into sleep mode. The only way to do that is to leave it uh, alone without anything really on for a period of time, okay? that's You can check out my other video on uh, how to get your car into sleep mode, but that's basically one of the ways to do it. Uh, we have a speed limit mode, okay? So if you have uh, kids that are using the car, you can set the speed limit. Sentry mode, which uh, turns on that extra security system recording everything, and all these other chimes. Now, park assist chimes are gonna be when you're getting too close stuff. Joe mode actually reduces all the sounds within the car. The security alarm is wicked, and when it goes off, it is loud. You could have a pin to drive, so when you get in, you enter in your four digit pin, and you're able to drive that way, almost like an extra key. Um, next after that, under safety and security, we have cabin overheat protection, which is either off, no AC or on. And this is basically for if you're in a really hot area and you want to keep your the inside of your car from getting too crazy hot, you can turn this on and allow mobile access. That's allowing you to use your phone, which you want and data sharing. OK, this is important. Tesla is asking you to kind of share your data from your car so they're able to improve it. I definitely recommend you do that. Under the service tab, we have wiper service mode. We press that and we're able to get our wipers up to change them. The adjust headlights is really for a technician. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using that. Towing mode uh, is setting the car to be able to move forward and backwards in a neutral state almost, so it's able to be towed. Uh, reset the uh, tire pressure monitor system, an actual factory reset to bring it all back to factory settings. Wheel configuration here, you can see I selected 18 inch because I have my winter tires on there, but you can select, if you change the wheels, you're able to, to uh, select them there and it will affect the graphical display of the car as well. And there's another option for owner's manual. Finally, we have software. Now the software is gonna show some of the similar details that you saw under that T tab up there, but it's gonna have a few extra ones. It's gonna have your actual version. It's gonna say your software is up to date and the release notes, and it's gonna show your navigation data. Now you'll wanna have this software update preference to advanced, so that basically the second it updates out, your car is going to download it. And the final setting in this car, uh, hopefully in case I've missed anything, the final setting is just this one down here, which opens the glove box. But yeah, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Well guys, if you survived all the way to the end, I really hope that that helped you uh, figure out some things about the Model 3's display, whether you're just a Tesla fan or you're somebody who's waiting for your car who, or has just received it. Uh, if you appreciate this video and you did make it this far, uh, thank you. Uh, please like and subscribe, guys. And if you are thinking about buying a Tesla, I do have my referral link in the description below. And if you click that and use it when you're buying, uh, we both get free supercharger miles. So that is good for everyone. Okay, have a good day.